Please welcome Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm very fast. How are you? I'm good. How are welcome. you? Welcome. I had no idea it was going to be so quick. So quick. Oh, we just try to be efficient. It's no, taxpayer I enjoy dollars. That. That's Canadian. We That's do. That's Canada we for gotta, you. You spent a lot of time up here, wouldn't yes. you say? I would. I would. Uh, I used to spend more time up here, but I do enjoy. Uh, I'm a Canadophile. Is that right? A canophile. Canophile? Yes. Also, you can People are nice and polite, and there's a history of great comedy. For your return to com stand up comedy, I think in some parts it's been five years. Where does the time go? That's the question. Star Stromabopolis. <laughs> <laughs> my Greek friend. That's right. Listen, go My off. Greek. I enjoy Greeks. My boyfriend's a swarthy Greek gentleman. You're not as swarthy as he is, no. but he. That's why it's because I hide all the chest hair. Uh, but, I hide it but I enjoy a Greek gentleman. I enjoy. And the, the Cypriot president, I like that name. You like that, yeah? Uh, Anastas, this is, uh, we, we need the name to distract from all the troubles over there. Oh, they, well, they're living on a cash economy now. Susie Orma would be very pleased. <laughs> uh, she would prefer that we not use credit cards, That's and the right. Cypriots are doing what Susie Orman says, because now that Oprah's gone, who will lead us? <laughs> so I believe Susie Orman is the right person for the job. Oprah's never gone. She's omnipresent. Oh, no, she's ubiquitous yeah, still. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, as we all used to await further instructions at the end, ends of our seats every afternoon. <laughs> She's not there for us. Uh, but Susie Orman is there. She's there. You know, it's Tough but fair. <laughs> Tough but fair. I like the cut of her jib. She's got, she knows what she's talking about. In your estimation, you are, you are, you are clearly a socially engaged. Yes, Mr. Stromabopolis. Politically, <laughs> Ms. Garofalo, yeah. politically connected, and that you, you do pay attention to the details. I do, I do try and pay attention. It's hard to get your arms around all of it. You were talking about being on stuff that you weren't necessarily happy with it at the time. Yeah. If, you, if you were to do the numbers on your career, how much of the stuff that you did were you happy with? Oh, there's been stuff that I've been happy with, and then there's been stuff that I had had better hopes for. You know, I was on, on a couple of network hour-long dramatic things that, that are just not my taste, and one in particular that was mercifully canceled after after one season was was a spinoff of Criminal No Minds. Now, Criminal Minds is a very popular show. It's not my thing. Um, th then I was offered a part on their spinoff. And, and I'm not in a position to be too choosy. It's not like there's tons, hey, 49-year-old lady, work with me. You know, there's nothing but roles for, for middle-aged ladies, as you know. Um, and so I was like, well, I would like to work. And, and I thought it was going to be better than it was. But it was um, torture porn. Is your responsibility as an actor to be in things you, be you believe in the content? Or can you just play a role? And that's just what it is. Oh, it depends on the person. I mean, you do want to work. Um, especially there's, if, if I had children, I'd be even more desirous of working. And uh, I don't have any kids that I am aware of. I may find out 20 years from now that I have some with Rob Cohen that I'm I, not aware of. I will aware tell you of. something. If there was a kid and you didn't know about it, mm -hmm. it's really good that you quit drinking. No kidding. <laughs> I'll say. Um, but, you know, drinking does take the edge off if you do have kids. Yes. I, I can understand why people drink who have kids. Uh, I, I think that if I... You know what, if I, if I was still drinking, I think I, I, I would have thrown my hat in the ring for marriage and children, for real. Because I think if I was still, like, moderately drunk all the time, I could make it work. One large chocolate milkshake. Two hamburgers with ketchup and mustard. How do you have Okay, uh, what kind of burgers? I need a number for the register. Is there one, like, meat on a bun? Ketchup and mustard? Yeah, that I can do. I've seen that. That's late for dinner. You even... That was my first acting job ever. Why How not? do you even have that? Well, we know. <laughs> this is what we do. Oh, my gosh. A lot of people still think of Reality Bites. What are your memories from that moment? This is about... Talking about self-sabotage. Um, there, there is honestly not enough room left in my feet for bullet holes at this point in my career. I don't know why I do it, but um, I do it. I cut those bangs that short the night before we started shooting. Um, and, you know, I love the Betty Page thing, and I, and I love short bangs, but for somebody full of face, as I was, especially as I was, I used to enjoy a cocktail back then, uh, and I was... As much meat as you can put on a face, I had on my face. And Betty Page bangs is wrong, is, is the wrong thing. And I knew that. 
and I and I the night before we started shooting, without checking with anyone, because they do hair and makeup tests prior to you shooting. They look at what you look like. They do makeup. They do your hair a certain way. I did that, like at midnight the night before shooting, which which has to be a. Uh, uh, to be difficult, like just to no, assert yourself. No, it's it's a it's a. I think I have this is not as bad anymore, but these issues with authority, perceived or real. There was it was not an authority <laughs> figure, but there's something about that. This is how you're going to wear your hair in the movie. Something about that. And then they also said, and they did also urge me to lose weight, at which I actually wound up gaining eight pounds because that'll show them. <laughs> that'll show them. Um, uh, you know that nonsense behavior. I, I don't. I'm not that immature anymore. Although I do have. Uh, uh, issues with authority figures still, but I, I try and tamp it down. Do you enjoy the career? Do you enjoy what's, what's gone on and where it's gone? Uh, sometimes, yes. I, I, I have wanted since I was uh, in high school to be a stand-up comic. I am a stand-up comic. I, you know, you can't argue with that. If you, that. Very few of us get to do in life what we want to do. Do, do I love the, the ups and downs of it? Do I love that it's... that? that the acting portion of it is not up to me and uh, that I need others to say I'm okay to do stuff. No, I don't. It, it, it's, it's quite debilitating to audition for things and be rejected constantly and, or, or to make some things. And, you know, may, you may or may not know this, but a lot of people are fired from pilots or films early on. And you don't hear about it a lot, but... Well, you got fired off Reality Bites and rehired, I was right? fired from Reality Bites and rehired, and I was threatened to be fired from Truth About Cats and Dogs and... Um, and if it weren't for Winona and Uma, I would have been. Um, they went to bat for me uh, in both those cases. And I have been fired uh, from pilots that have been reshot w without me. Uh, it's quite, it's not unusual. I'm not saying yeah. poor me. Yeah. It, am I thrilled with that stuff? No, it hurts terribly. Even stuff you hated. Once you're fired from, you're like, oh, even if you're like, I hate this job. If you're fired, you, all of a sudden, it, how, do you, it hurts. How, how do you manage it? Oh, I cry. A lot. I cry a lot. Um, I talk to myself, unfortunately, um, about it and try and talk myself through it. And a lot of times when I'm walking the dogs and I'll wind up speaking out loud on the street and then I have to start singing to pretend that... Because like, I... Well, uh, frequently parts of phrases will come out loud, but I do need What's validation that? from others. I, I admit that freely. I need it, and it hurts terribly when your career is you know, not in your control and, and you're not where you once were, perhaps, which clearly, you know, in the 90s, I had a lot of opportunities. That's not been the case since about 2002. And, and, it, and, it, and it hurts your, it, or me, I don't know how other actors handle it. It hurts my feelings terribly because I, I want to be accepted. I want, I want to be uh, thought of for roles or people but to believe you want to be me. accepted, and, and I think you're doing it the right way, you want to be accepted on your terms. Uh, no, no, I shifted, just want right? uh, uh, Well, I don't know what that means on my terms. I want to be accepted in that, because when I audition for things, I'm not, I'm not going to be me. Now, granted, a lot of people are under the impression I am playing close to myself uh, frequently in a lot of those movies, because of the first job that got noticed was Larry Sanders. I was asked to behave that way. I was asked and directed to behave in that very dour, downbeat manner. Uh, others said, oh, let's get her then to do this. And I was, I didn't think in terms of you can be typecast. And then Daria happened, which I am not the voice of Daria, but I was credited with it, but I, I, it wasn't me. Um, not, not that I'm ashamed of it, it's just that poor woman who was Daria. Um, but even in ads for it and stuff, people would, or reviews sometimes would make the mistake of saying Jenny Ruffalo in Daria. And so it becomes who people think that you are. Uh, and, and I don't want to be thought of that way. I want to be accepted on any terms, uh, you know what I mean, uh, of acceptance. You're always welcome here. Thank, oh, I just, sorry, I just wiped my nose. Thank you. <laughs> Can you go off, everybody?